There's my cat Pilkington. Pilkington is not allowed on the table. But he is. Hey buddy. Hello, my name is Brian Cushing. I'm the program director at Locust Grove. And when we all found out that we were going to have to figure out how to work without being around each other, without having the public in, uh, we were going to need to figure out how to get content out to people to do work that was valuable for the site. We all came up with a plan uh, of how we were going to get that done. And one of my first thoughts was we've, we've got some upcoming programs in the work in the works uh, with the Hearth Kitchen that I needed some practice on. And so maybe I'd go out and I'd just practice uh, some skills out in the Hearth Kitchen. But then it dawned on me that it's a kitchen. And just like any other kitchen, people congregate there. You know, there's people around Locust Grove all the time. They smell the smoke, they see the activity, they come and they and they want to find out what's going on and usually that's what we want. We want people to come and, uh, and discover history with us. Um, but in this case, we didn't need a congregation in the kitchen in close quarters. So started switching gears to thinking about uh, maybe let's talk about uh, how we can translate some historic recipes into our modern kitchens because a lot of people uh, they pick up an old cookbook for the first time uh, they see that the recipes don't look a whole lot like what you would get out of a cookbook or off the internet or something today uh, and they get intimidated and scared off so uh, this is going to be the first of hopefully several uh, walks through how we can take a recipe from the 18th or early 19th century and make it in our own modern kitchens at home, maybe while we're weathering this whole uh, crisis that we're in. So the, uh, the first one we're gonna do comes from The Imperial and Royal Cook by Frederick Nutt. Uh, this is from 1809. Uh, I did pick this up in the uh, excellent Locust Grove Museum store, thanks to Jennifer Jansen out there. Uh, and this was published in 1809, uh, like I said, which is the uh, first year of our interpretive period. And the really neat thing about this book, uh, in uh, Mr. Nutt's introduction, he uh, talks about how there are plenty of really great cookbooks out there that walk people through the basics of cooking and he didn't uh he, he said those are wonderful cookbooks but he didn't really want to go over the same ground and so he's taking it to another level here he's he's kind of building on top of that uh teaching people how to make a little bit kind of fancier food like if you want to do a nice dinner party uh, but what we're going to do today is about as basic as you can get uh and hopefully that'll kind of uh make it seem not so scary. Uh, maybe it's something you can try uh, at home. It is called uh, Beef a la Vingrette, and let's go get started. Okay, so welcome to my actual kitchen at home, and we are set up with everything that we need to make uh, Beef a la Vingrette from Frederick Nutt's uh, The Imperial and Royal Cook. And so what you'll need is about a three inch cut of uh, round beef roast uh, with fat on it. And so that's what this is. It's about three inches this way and it's got fat on it. You'll need a quart or four cups of chicken stock, a glass of white wine. Okay, and a glass for them is like that, about two ounces. Uh, what we a lot of times call a glass, they might call a goblet. You're gonna need some salt and pepper, some uh, ground cloves, and sweet herbs. Now it's March and the only sweet herb we had coming up in the garden uh, at the moment was mint. So we're gonna use a little bit of that and we're also gonna use some dried uh, basil and one bay leaf. Uh, so that's what we're gonna need. And we will use our iron pot here, but you don't need an iron pot. You can use just a regular, uh, just a regular stainless steel pot. Uh, let's go through the recipe as it states it. Uh, cut a slice three inches thick from a round of beef with some fat to it. So we've, we've done that. We're going to put that in our pot. Stew it with a quart of second stock and add a glass of white wine. And so here's, they say second stock, we're just going to use chicken stock. I got this at the grocery store. It should be just fine. And again, our glass of white wine. is about two ounces. So we're just gonna pour that in. Frederick Nutt then directs us 
to season with salt, pepper, cloves, sweet herbs, and bay leaf. Uh, and it kind of when I read that, I debated if it meant to to rub the beef in those herbs and everything first. Uh, but since it put it in that order, the direction we're just going to put it in the broth and let that stew together for a while. Uh, this is one of those things that could throw people because it's not specific. Uh, but you just pretty much go with your gut. Um, if you mess it up once, try it again and, and correct it. Um, and just kind of what you generally prefer to have in something like this. Uh, and so I'm going to be very general about this. If you want to be cautious, you know, start off with a, a couple of teaspoons or something like that. Our cloves. I like basil, so we're going to do plenty of basil. I'm going to chop this mint up a little bit. into the table cold. So folks, that's that's all the, there is to it. We've got we just got to simmer this until this liquid is nearly gone. We let it cool and we serve it. So let's go to the stove. Okay, so here it is on the stove. I'm going to cover it over to help that uh, help that heat come up. Uh, but I'm not going to do it too quick cuz I don't want to don't want to scorch anything. So I'm going to put it about 3 quarters of the way up and uh, we'll see how long that takes us to uh, get to a low boil. Um, and I'm not gonna let it stay at a rolling boil forever. I'm gonna turn it down more to a slow simmer. Okay, so I don't want to go in really any higher than that. We're going to hold it there. Uh, you're going to have to play with your own stove at home. To, you, you'll have to bring it up and bring it back down again. Uh, one thing that you didn't see uh, while I was off camera is uh, some of the herbs started uh, gathering around the side. And so uh, kind of be sure to scrape those back off into the uh, into the broth there, uh, or liquor as they call it, uh, so that they don't just scorch to the side. You might also want to move the meat around uh, a little bit from time to time just to be sure that it's not sticking at all. I am going to put the lid partially on there, not all the way. I'm going to leave a gap because we do want that liquid to evaporate, um, but I want it also to, I want the meat to be well steamed in it uh, and all of that. So uh, this is something you're gonna wanna keep an eye on it as it goes. So uh, sometimes if you got it covered, the uh, it can start to boil quicker than you want. Um, so keep an eye on it. And at the end of this, we'll be able to report on how long this took to cook. Okay, so it's been on for about an hour. We're gonna take this lid off. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of liquid there, but it's mostly boiled off. We haven't scorched. So I'm gonna take it off the fire, or off the burner. Oh, and it just fogged up my lens. So here it is. It cooked for about an hour, and it's been cooling about that long too. The book did say to send it to the table cold. All right, so finally time to see how we did. Gonna pair this with a dry red wine. And the first thing I noticed right off the bat is that all the spices kind of formed a nice crust around the outside a little bit as it cooked. So it's very nice, very flavorful. Um, it's a little bit drier than I think I would have preferred. But I kind of had the idea when I was starting out that this particular roast was uh, didn't have quite as much fat as um, 
as Frederick Nutt, the author, was was recommending. So uh, if I was to do it again, I'd probably make a sauce to go with it, uh, or otherwise try to find a less lean cut of beef, which is not our custom these days. It's not usually what we're looking for. Yeah, this turned out pretty well uh, in the end. It's very flavorful. Like I say, the only cr uh, critique I have is it's a little bit dry. It's certainly not a standalone dish. Um, so if I was to do it again, I would probably make a sauce to go with it, or um, or to just find a, a less lean cut of beef, something with a little bit more fat on it. Um, and it's as easy as that. It was it was a matter of, of throwing some things in a pot, um, simmering it for about an hour, uh, letting it cool off. Uh, it's all ingredients that are uh, commonly available to us today, um, and it's as easy as that to have uh, a little taste of the period of Locust Grove while we are while we can't all be together right now. If you're a, one of the fans of Jane Austen, uh, same period. Uh, so there's just this nice little simple uh, taste of the past, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back on site as soon as possible. But until then, we're gonna uh, we're gonna keep working, and uh, we will be coming to you as often as possible. Thank you so much, and here's to you.